Approach to a patient with Huntington's disease. A 35-year-old man presents to the clinic following a suicide attempt. When asked for his motive, he states that the holiday season has been a big source of stress for him. The patient's family reports an eight-month history of irritability with intermittent outbursts, which has led to a partial family estrangement. The patient also mentions he is losing interest in his job as a car mechanic, has trouble with attention and multitasking, and now has difficulty manipulating his tools. He has three healthy children and only knows the medical history of his adoptive parents and nothing about his biological parents except that his biological father committed suicide in his 40s. He says he hasn't been feeling like himself recently. Huntington's disease is an autosomal dominantly inherited neurodegenerative disease. Huntington's disease is characterized by a triad of motor, cognitive, and psychiatric symptoms. Symptom onset for most occurs around 30 to 40 years of age, but may occur in children and older adults. The cardinal motor symptom is chorea. In addition, abnormal saccadic eye movements, impaired coordination, dystonia, dysarthria, and postural instability will occur. Neuropsychiatric symptoms can include depression, irritability, anxiety, and impulsivity, and contribute to the high suicide rate in this population. Obsessive compulsive symptoms and apathy are not uncommon, and unlike other psychiatric symptoms, apathy can worsen over time. Cognitive symptoms include impairments in executive function, working memory, inattention, and cognitive slowing. Many individuals will experience anosognosia or lack of awareness of their symptom severity, and therefore collateral information should be sought from the care partner. The cognitive and motor symptoms worsen throughout the disease course although psychiatric symptoms may fluctuate. The cardinal choreiform movements are demonstrated here. Watch for the intermittent, random, purposeless low to moderate amplitude movements in the upper and lower extremities. Neuroimaging will reveal striatal volume loss. Caudate nucleus atrophy results in the appearance of boxcar ventricles. The clinical diagnosis of HD has historically required identifying characteristic motor signs that meet a high diagnostic confidence level on the unified Huntington's disease rating scale and either family history or confirmatory genetic testing. However, cognitive and neuropsychiatric symptoms can manifest before significant motor symptoms, leading to functional decline and therefore efforts are underway to revise diagnostic criteria to include non-motor features. There are two types of genetic testing for HD, predictive and confirmatory. Predictive testing is available for at-risk individuals with an affected parent or grandparent to evaluate the presence of the pathogenic CAG repeat expansion in the HTT gene. Predictive testing does not accurately determine when the individual will develop symptoms. The number of CAG repeats is inversely correlated with the age of symptom onset, but this only accounts for 60% of the variance Greater than 40 CAG repeats on one allele is considered to be pathogenic with full penetrance. Anticipation can occur with paternal inheritance, therefore juvenile HD, while rare, is most often paternally inherited. It is imperative that genetic counseling and a mental health assessment occur prior to genetic testing. While there is currently no approved disease-modifying therapy for Huntington's disease, Potentially meaningful symptomatic treatment is achieved with pharmacologic and non-pharmacologic strategies. The pharmacologic treatment is available for motor and non-motor symptoms, with treatment not being limited to the following examples. Fascicular monoamine transporter 2 VMAT inhibitors, including tetrabenazine and dutetrabenazine, are FDA-approved therapies used to treat chorea related to Huntington's disease. Antipsychotic medications such as risperidone and olanzapine can be used off-label for chorea and psychiatric slash neurobehavioral symptoms. Medications that may be used for psychiatric symptoms include antidepressants, fluoxetine, sertraline, and escitalopram. Mood stabilizers such as divalproic acid, carbamazepine, and lamotrigine, and antipsychotics such as quetiapine, risperidone, and olanzapine. Given the high incidence of suicide in Huntington's disease, anxiety, depression, and suicidality should be routinely assessed at each clinic visit. Palliative, supportive, 
physical, and occupational therapies are vital for patients to maintain mobility, speech, and the ability to swallow effectively. Advanced care planning is important in understanding and fulfilling patients' wishes in the context of their disease. It is important not to overlook Huntington's disease as a potential diagnosis in this scenario. Our patient underwent a complete evaluation including a neurologic exam that was significant for delayed horizontal and vertical saccade initiation, reduced saccadic velocity, and intermittent, random, purposeless, low to moderate amplitude movements in the upper and lower extremities, consistent with chorea. He endorsed irritability outbursts, apathy, and cognitive impairment. After visiting with a genetic counselor and psychologist, genetic testing revealed 42 CAG repeats in allele 1 in 17 CAG repeats in allele 2 of the HTT gene, consistent with Huntington's disease. The patient's depression, irritability, and frequent outbursts were treated with an SSRI. The patient and his family did not feel that motor symptoms were bothersome enough to warrant treatment. If his chorea required treatment, the use of either an antipsychotic or a VMAT2 inhibitor may be considered after sufficiently treating his depression. He began psychotherapy with close psychiatric and neurologic follow-up. For more information about this and other neurologic disorders, please visit aan.com slash neurobytes.